sacrificial lamb, you will receive our most sacred body. It begins now. When day breaks, you too will join our covenant to share in my holy blessing forever. Condor One to Roost. Do you read me? Condor One? You've been radio silent for three hours. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Won't let it happen again. And the church? I'm still looking for whatever key I need. Copy that. I'm glad you're okay. Roost out. Welcome to part five of Resident Evil 4. And holy shit, <laughs> there's a ton of snakes and just utterly useless crap in my inventory. Let me move some stuff around. Or let me not. Apparently that's good for now. I remember when I played RE4 for the first time back in 2005-2006. I was just messing around with the case so much and I think I spent like 45 minutes just trying to fit everything into there because I was like, what do I do? Where, do I, where does everything go? <laughs> this is stupid. Nothing's fitting in. But I loved every second of it. Now I can fit stuff into my case like it's no problem. At least until I need another case upgrade. Yes, you still need to upgrade your case one size up whenever you get the opportunity to. It's because the more powerful weapons take up more space, of course, and you're going to need those more powerful weapons for the more powerful bosses later on. Especially a certain guy of Napoleon stature that we're about to take on at a certain point in time. And no, I do not use the golden egg. That's cheating. <laughs> Oh boy, these guys make a return, and I feel like they're just as annoying as they were in the original game. It's mainly because their slash is a lot larger than it looks. You can at least mitigate some of the damage with the parry system in this game, so that's a point to the remake. But the slash move that the Lost Plagueis does is very, very big, so you have to be careful. So what I do is I use the opportunity to whore out my submachine gun. It does a really good job of keeping these guys back. Uh, Leon, haven't you ever thought about a job behind a desk or a job in security or something that's simpler than this? But then again, it was not like he could have said no to the President of the United States. I mean, he was handpicked for this. Yep, he was, he's held by the balls on this one. At least that's the backstory of the remake. I'm not sure how Leon got handpicked in the original version. I think it was much of the same, actually. That was originally a plot point that was left vague in the 2005 version, so to have that part flesh out is a bit more interesting. From the church. Is this the key? So the point of this puzzle is to retrieve two relics from two different locations. And this chapter is strangely more open than all the other chapters in this game, so you can freely explore the area of the lake. And yeah, here's the entire lake. We, we have to explore everything. <laughs> well, not everything, but you, you kind of want to explore if you want to get good stuff. Which is strange. This chapter feels kind of weird because of the openness of it. Which I'm not trying to say that chapter 4 is bad in the remake. I actually like chapter 4. But it does feel like the odd one out, if you know what I mean. Someone fetch me a rare gold chicken egg. Well, I know one place where you can find a gold chicken egg, I just won't get it because that takes time. Yeah, I just realized that I won't be 100%ing the game, which is 
kind of sad, but again, I don't really 100% games like that. I've only 100%ed two games in my life, and that was Vice City, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Batman Arkham City. That's it. The reason being, I just don't have time to play one game and 100% all the way through. Not like I used to. And even when I did used to have time, I wanted to play every game I got my hands on. <laughs> and you know, I might 100% RE4 one day. Just not today. Or in this playthrough. Anyway, I gotta sell off the Vipers. As well as my first pistol. I wanna make more room for other weapons in the game. Man, every time I look, my knife gets more and more busted up. And as the game progresses, enemies get tougher and therefore your knife durability goes down quicker. So you gotta be sure to put some points in the durability whenever you're at the merchant. And the rocket launcher. Oh boy, the rocket launcher. Do I buy the rocket launcher at all during this playthrough? Um, maybe. I honestly don't even know. It's mostly because I haven't recorded the final parts yet, and I do believe in the original Ada just gives you a rocket launcher anyway, so there's really no point. That's even if Ada still gives you a rocket launcher in the remake, I'm not even sure yet. Again, from the time I recorded this, I still have not finished the entire game yet. I I think I'm at least three or four chapters away from the ending, so I have to get those parts recorded too. Which honestly should not be too much of a problem because I'm uploading these on a daily basis. And I got like at least 20 more parts before we get to that point. <laughs> Alright, let's get back on the boat and explore some stuff. And this is a really good addition, being able to ride the boat anytime you want. At least in Chapter 4. Now you can smash into barrels to get some collectibles, or Peseta. It's mostly Peseta 9 times out of 10 though. Here's the location where the first relic is. You cannot open the door from this side, you have to go around. Then you also have to be careful, there are Ganados in the area, and some of them have dynamite. Well, at least I'm not going to run out of handgun ammo anytime soon. <laughs> I never run out of handgun ammo in this game. I do run out of every other type of ammo, though, because... I don't know. This game is very generous with handgun bullets, but nothing else. You kind of have to make the other types of bullets with your resources, or when the game decides to give you some of those bullets. But here you got to be careful, because more of these enemies will not only have dynamite, but they'll also have the Plagueis inside them. I thought this guy had the Plagueis inside him, but it turns out his head just exploded. But again, watch out for the dynamite. You can use the narrow passages to your advantage because the Ganados just funnel into one particular passageway and you can use the dynamite to blow them all up. Or just blow yourself up because that guy just tanked a whole bunch of my bullets and then I shot the dynamite by accident and blew myself up in the process. That can happen too. Okay, so I have better luck with this guy because he had a torch with him. So I got two for one here, but turns out they have Plagueis inside them. So I was not really that lucky, except yes I am because I have a flashbang grenade on me. And as you know, flashbang grenades kill the Plagueis in one hit. So that's a nice tip if you don't want to waste a whole bunch of bullets on a spongy enemy. And believe me, these guys are very spongy now. Especially the ones coming up later on that can kill you in one hit. We still haven't seen those yet. Okay, that's that door so I can make a quick getaway. And there's a guy right down the hallway. Or passageway. It's not a hallway. We're not indoors. There we go. One guy down, ten more to go. Oh, come on, man. Now one guy down, ten more to go. Jesus. There's going to be more Ganados spawning from the area you just came from, so you got to watch out for that, too. Okay, let me just get a lucky headshot. I need a lucky headshot. There we go. And... 
Wow, did that kick really just reach behind me and kick the other guy too? <laughs> Man, Leon's kicks are broken in this game. Kind of like in the original. It's like the very motion of kicking just rips apart space-time and affects people on the other side of Leon. <laughs> but it's fun when you know how to use it and just destroy a whole bunch of enemies in one fell swoop. Does Chris have that in Resident Evil 5? Well, I mean, he's got a punch and it pretty much operates the same as Leon's kicks where you're invincible throughout the animation, but it's not as fancy as Leon's kicks, honestly. <laughs> Oh, and then there's Shiva, too. And she has awesome kicks, too, but still nowhere near as broken as Leon. Alright, so in order to figure out the next puzzle, you have to look at the cavern walls to see what icons match up with the door. It's simple to figure out, but also you gotta get rid of the Ganados in the area, too, because they can get in the way. I just realized something. Apparently you can deflect torches out of the air. I just saw the prompt pop up on the bottom right portion of the screen. So that's something. It looks like Leon has the potential to block a lot of stuff. Unless if they are, of course, big attacks that cannot be humanly blocked. Not bad, right? You know, that was pretty bad. One of those Ganados has a worm in it. Oh, that's not fair. You hate fire. You're supposed to be burning to death. That's not cool at all. Wait, there's another one? Come on, just take the hint. Leon's too good for your squiggly ass. <laughs> uh, just die already. I think that's all of them. I hope that's all of them. I need time to look at the walls. But first, let me get back some of my machine gun ammo that I just wasted upon those guys. Well, I'm actually recording this on the day that the Mercenaries DLC came out, and I still have not played it yet. <laughs> I, I bought the DLC, or I downloaded it because it's free, and I still have not touched it yet. Don't worry, by the end of next part, hopefully I remember to tell you if Mercenaries mode is good or not. Which, it should be. It's it's Mercenaries mode. How can you screw up Mercenaries mode? But don't worry, I'll play it tonight. I'll let you know. Here's me figuring out that the icons are painted onto the walls as clues. So here's clue number one. It's going to be on these two pillars, and it looks like... I don't know how to explain it. It's just like one cross that's going up and one cross that's going down. But they're not really crosses. They're like spirals. I guess that's what they are, spirals. So you want to hit the bottom one. The other two clues are nearby somewhere. The next clue is to the left of this mechanism, and it is... Well, I'm going to have to walk away further in order to figure it out. It's this icon, which I don't know what that's supposed to be, but that is a clue for the mechanism. Just look for what appears to be a palm tree or something, I don't know. <laughs> And one spiral facing up and one spiral facing down. Now, where's the other one at? Or maybe I didn't figure it out yet. Oh man, first playthroughs, am I right? <laughs> and no, seriously, if you get at least two of these hints right, then the rest should be easy. Because in all actuality, you could just get two of the hints and then put the same two in and then just bullshit the rest of the way. Resident Evil sure loves its puzzle elements just as much as its zombies. But that also depends on the RE game you're playing. Surely Co Veronica and RE 1 and 2 are more puzzle heavy than, say, 4, 5, and 6. And Resident Evil 0 is. a mess. <laughs> you can tell I don't like that game very much. Then there are also spin off games like Operation Raccoon City, which I thought was pretty cool. I didn't really play that much of it, but what I have played was okay. There's also Survivor, which I've never played at all. I don't know anything about Resident Evil Survivor. And then there's also The Umbrella Chronicles on the Wii, which I thought the game was good, but I don't really get into Unreal's light gun style games like that, so I just thought it was a neat novelty, and that's really about it. 
And then there are the Resident Evil movies. Um, yeah, the first two were good. Pretty okay. And then the rest were just downhill from there. <laughs> you thought Resident Evil 5 jumped the shark, but no, it was really the movies. I was thrown off by the live action movies. They were complete night and day compared to the style of the games. But anyway, I got the head and now I have to go back to the boat. But we do got Ganados back in the area, so there's that. Oh god, get out of my way! You could just run past these guys. The boat is not really locked down to anything. Damn, he's on the boat. Can't really do anything if he's on the boat, eh? Or something like that. I, I don't know what they're saying in Spanish. They could be calling Leon a bitch for all I know. <laughs> but that is far from the truth. Leon's no bitch. Okay, I thought that was a docking area. The good thing is, if you hit a wall, you don't take damage. You just bounce off the wall and slow down. That's it. Negative, negative. It didn't go in. It just impacted off the surface. Anyway, here's the secret area. Here you're going to need the Way Shrine Key, and you're going to get a Splendid Bangle. With this bangle, you can slide two rectangular gemstones into it. Which, oh, okay, I actually do have a rectangular gemstone. So I'm going to put the Red Bureau in there for right now. There's so really no space for the ruby, so I'm just going to leave it as is and be on my way. You can get a ton of Meseta here. There's really no reason to pass these barrels. And I just realized I said Meseta like it's fucking fantasy start. No, Pesetas. Pesetas, not Meseta. I'm sure that's probably not going to be the last time I make that mistake. <laughs> kind of like how I keep thinking that these locations are docking areas, but it's really just shipwrecks. Here's a docking location. Jeez, this episode is going to be a two-parter for sure, because... I pretty much explore up and down this lake, looking for clues as to where to go next. And it was a... that is an interesting experience. Again, I, this wasn't in the original Resident Evil 4, it was pretty much just a straight path through the whole way of Chapter 4 in that game. And even when that game branched out, it was still on land. You weren't taking a boat of any kind. Oh, a pearl bangle. I like how Leon reacts to the rain, he's like, oh, it's wet. Shit. <laughs> uh, and the rain is somewhat rendered in real time. It's not just a thing that's in the environment, but it's not there. It's actually raining. And people were making a big deal about the rain in Resident Evil 4. They were like, oh my god, look at this rain. It looks so good. And I was like, I'll believe it when I see it. And now that I saw it, yeah, rain's pretty good. It's pretty good looking rain. It's consistent with the environment, the characters react to it, and yeah, it it works. I'll give it to Capcom for the rain effects. Rain is a pretty hard effect to pull off in video games and make it animate realistically. As well as snow. Snow is hard too. In fact, snow is even harder to animate because, it, at least with rain, it falls down kind of consistently. Snow just goes wherever the hell it wants, <laughs> even in real life. Snow is just a really weird phenomenon in general, and I love it. <laughs> I kind of miss the snow, though I don't miss shoveling the shit. <laughs> oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, you can adjust the orientation of where you're facing to the map, too. So if you really want to turn the map upside down, you can, and it's kind of disorienting. In fact, it's very disorienting. Oh, really? You're gonna get stuck on that?
this boat is going to have a special secret. And that is... Alexandrite. Well, other than the Alexandrite, there's another secret here. And that is... Other than the large resources too... I'm going to make something out of that in a minute. But other than the large resources in the Alexandrite is... The Red Nine. Pretty good for this part of the game. It does a lot of damage, but the only problem is the recoil and it's very slow to fire. So if you want something quick or you're just very inaccurate with shots, you're probably not going to be fond of the Red Nine. But its damage output is very worth it. And you can sell it off later too. There's that too. Anyway, back to somewhere. Actually, I think I go back to the shrine because I want to put the head on that uh, pedestal and get one of those in place at least. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Really, Leon? <laughs> Where did you learn to drive? Or piloting. Technically, the term is piloting a boat because boats don't have wheels and you can't drive a boat. And this isn't SpongeBob, even though one of the voice actresses from the original game was Sandy Cheeks. <laughs> yeah, that was a thing. And also, Mendez, Big Cheese, was voiced by one of the voice actors from Beauty and the Beast. I did not know about this until a couple of days ago, where one of my viewers pointed this out, and I was like, wait, what? Really? So not only did the original game had a Nickelodeon voice actress, but it also had a Disney voice actor. Wonder if somebody else was a Cartoon Network voice actor in the original game, too. And they just got the gig just because. I doubt that. And the voice actors in the new game are trying to make a more serious betrayal, so the acting is nowhere near as hammy. So you're not going to hear a Lewis or Leon, help, <laughs> uh, or also a favorite line of mine. Oh no! Whenever Ashley gets kidnapped or dies, I wish Leon. I wish Leon kept that line in. That original line just sounded so emotionless, but at the same time really just like dreaded because he was like, oh crap, the president's daughter has been kidnapped again and I can't seem to catch up this time. But in all fairness, what the remake lacks in those original quotes, it makes up for in new original quotes. Because <laughs> some of these quotes are funny too. Who the fuck are you? We all have names. Now then. Then come, Sancho Panza. Let us rescue the Princess Dulcinea. You gotta hurt yourself. Hey, that was my dance. Okay, we hurry, I get it. But anyway, here's the chicken coop, and you can get a golden egg here, it just takes a lot of time. Time that I probably should have spent off screen, but nah, I just wanted to move on with the game. <laughs> And right here is a Velvet Blue, which you can sell to the merchant for a pretty penny. But hey, at least they took my advice to keep their chickens outside. The only chicken that should be indoors is a cooked chicken. Like, what the hell were these guys in part one doing? Alright, so I got one more place to explore before I go on for the relic. And, and part one. And that is going to be at the same place that... Well, the same place where that shack was, where I met Louis. Or Luis. It's Luis, not Louis. But yeah, we're, we're going back to that area. Alright, so we're going to go past the shack and go towards the fire. Here, there's going to be a door, and since I have the key for the door, I can unlock it. Use the insignia key. Let's see what we can find here. Can someone catch the gigantic fish that lives in the lake for me? Fish oil has many uses after all. And we're supposed to sell a locker bass. After we kill it, of course. I don't think I'd do that side quest. It's even raining inside this cave. And inside 
here too. Holy crap. Oh, is that the lady from the beginning of the game? Uh, we gotta find Ashley quickly before she becomes another sacrifice to the Los Illuminados, or just Los Illuminados. Let me get more submachine gun bullets. And we climb this ladder, and not only are we greeted with more stuff to use, but another sacrifice that Leon, I don't even think, interacts with or says anything about. Yeah, he doesn't say anything. So, yeah, I'm just here for the stuff. I'm here for all the stuff. Let me mix that. There we go. And I'm going to use that to max my health. And I think there's more bullets over here. Or in a small key. Let's not forget about the small key. Oh, it wasn't bullets. It was peseta. Pesetas. And I can't go that way. Well... Uh, that's something. This is just a dead end. Hopefully we don't run into any more unpleasant surprises. That's going to be the end of the part. I'll see you in episode 6.